Hey, Crazy Bill here today. Today we're going to be talking about how to make your own 3D prints. I'm going to show you guys how you can model your own 3D prints with a free piece of software. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you what I do. Crazy Will here from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to make your own 3D printed models. So I'm sure a lot of you got 3D printers for Christmas, and you've been all over Thingiverse, going through everything and printing like crazy. That's all fine and dandy, but when it comes down to it, when you wanna make useful things, like this stuff, you know, things that you need around the house, or things that you need for your YouTube channel, or just things in general that you see a problem and you wanna fix it. How do you make your own models? You're probably wondering that. Now, you could go out and buy a nice piece of expensive CAD software and spend months learning how to use it, or you could use this free piece of software that is actually web-based, and it's by one of the companies that make one of those expensive CAD softwares called Tinkercad. So what I'm gonna show you today is the basics of Tinkercad, how to use the interface, how it works, how to start and make your own model, and by the end of it, I'm gonna show you how to make this cool little box. Just an example a little box with a lid. Just an example of what you can create inside Tinkercad. Now I know what you guys are thinking, it well, well it's a box. It's showing you the fundamentals of the software and it'll get you started actually making your own models. So if you follow along with my tutorial, at the end I'll show you how to make this. It'll give you a really good understanding on how to use this software. And it's really not that hard guys. Now one thing that you may want to pick up on top of using this free piece of software is a digital caliber. Basically if you want to know diameter diameters of things, this will tell you in millimeters because most of the world uses millimeters. For example, you put this right in between this, this is my camera lens cover, so it's 57.4 millimeters. Now if you want to do the inside diameter, you use the back end and you open it up and it is 51.5 millimeters. This will help you make things for around the house or you want to try and get exact measurements. This is a big part of what you need to try and make different parts. You can use a regular tape measure too. You can switch it in the program and I'll show you that but this thing is really handy to have around it's about 15 bucks on Amazon it's an electronic digital caliber definitely pick one of these up it's just an easy way to make some of those complicated things and measure things so that way you can get it precisely done it'll save you a lot of filament all right so let's get over to the computer and get started shall we all right so here we are on my desktop if we bring over Safari we are gonna go to tinkercad.com like it says right here link will be in the description down below guys I always try to do that for you you can do join now that's probably what you're gonna do I just need to sign in and I just sign in using my Facebook account probably the only thing I use it for because I am not a fan of Facebook now these are all the different things that I actually created with Tinkercad and this program is really nice because you can bring in stuff that's been already made and actually tinker with it and actually change it one of the major things that I did was my brothers you probably seen this in Thingiverse or my mini factory I took the skull with the pistons on it and I put my brother's name in there time G and I made him a little Tommy G thing so I added that in there and I actually scaled it up but I'm just gonna show you the basics so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create new create new design I'm gonna show you the interface a little bit it's really quite nice and they give you a lot of information here this is the new feature they put in notes this is your interface to zoom in and out you use the scroll wheel if you don't have the scroll wheel I have the magic mouse so I just move my finger up and down if you right click it spins the environment around so you can work around if you left click you select things so you can select things with the left click if you want to pan you hit shift button and left click and you can pan back and forth so just to give you that that you can pan up and down left and right so I call it the hand tool and then you got your hotkey buttons here you can go to the top and you can click on the arrow, go to the front, or we could just go back to where we were. You can click on home, it'll put it back home. Fill view, I guess if you select something, it'll fill the view. You got the zoom in and out. So if you have the touch features, this is, I don't really use these that much. I use the home and I use this. I'll show you real quick what this is. We can click any primitive over here, and I'm just gonna click a box and put it in here. And I want to show you this. This is a great feature right here. This switches to flat view and 3D view. What's great about that is if you're trying to line stuff up and you click on flat view and you go to the top, 
you have a flat view of the actual object. But you can turn off that flat view and then you'll see more, you get like more of an edge. It's not it's not as clear as opposed to flat view. So it's it's when, when you're lining stuff up and you'll see, you want to switch back and forth to 3D view and flat view because sometimes you're trying to line things up and it just doesn't work out as well. Now, as soon as you bring a primitive in here, you get this little window up here. There's a solid and then there's holes. So if you're gonna make a hole into something, you're gonna turn it into a hole. And then the solid, if you click on it, you can pick any color you want. We'll go purple, because I like purple. And then you get a whole bunch of options here. As you can see, you can round the edges, radius, segments, length, width, height. You can play with that. I don't really do it that way whenever I'm making something. And if you hit Command-Z, it goes back and keep hitting Command-Z, it goes back to what it originally was. So before I get into all this, I just want to go into the interface. Over here you have copy, you can copy this, you can duplicate, so if I click on this and I hit duplicate, now it has another copy. If I hit delete, it deletes it. These are your undos. It looks like they really did a good job with the interface as far as touch goes. I guess you could do this on an iPad pretty quick. Now this is a web interface, so if you do disconnect from the internet, it, it'll auto save, but you may lose your work. So that's the only thing that's bad about this. But if you go up here, you can change the name of the, the project. We'll call it Box, hit enter. It makes an automatic name. If you click on the Tinkercad, it brings you back to the original interface, which I'll show you that real quick. It saves your work automatically, and there's Box. And then it shows you a 3D view, and we'll go back into that, and we'll go to Tinker This. We have all these options. Let me show you this. You got your 3D design. These up here, I'm not really going to get into because it's more like Minecraft and Lego and invite people. And you're, I'm not going to get into these today. I am going to show you import. You can import a 3D object. You can export a 3D object. You can send it to somebody. We're going to be mainly using the export your workspace tool. This is a really cool tool. Like if you're going to try and build something that you want to change the workspace, you can click on the workspace and you can put it on top of this. So if you want to add on to this, you can do that. Now the workspace is actually on top of this. And if I go to add another object, I can line it up right with the other object. And you can do it also on the side of an object too. So now the workspace is on the side. So if, again, and we'll put the cylinder right here, it makes it easier to work in. Now, if you want to put it back the way it was, you just click the workspace and then you click this down here and it goes back to the original workspace just to give you a quick way of positioning things. You got your rules, you put this rule wherever you want it. It is what it says it is, that it's actually rules, so you, you can actually measure out stuff. So apparently you could change points. I don't use the rule that often. You can add notes, that's another thing. You could add a note here, you could say top. That's a new feature they just added. And then that way, when you're clicking off stuff, if you want somebody to see something, oh, this is where the top is, and we can minimize that, we can open it up, and we can delete it. Boom, right there. So let's get rid of all these objects. We'll delete it. We'll bring in a regular box. I'm gonna just show you some really quick, some interface toggles here so that way you guys can see it. Here is where you can make the size. So if I wanna make this 30 by 30, we can just type in the size of the actual object. We can rotate the object. And if you wanna rotate it up here, you can rotate it that way. If you want to change the size, this going up and down, which if we hit Command Z, we can actually change this, the height. So we can put, I don't know, 30 again and make it higher. So there's your quick interface. To move the object, you just click on it and you drag it around. If you want to bring it up, you click on this arrow up here and you bring it up and down. And it actually shows you right here how tall you want to go. So you can actually adjust that right there if I want to make it go 20 high so that way I can get an exact measurement. And that's why I said you need that measuring tool because you're going to need to know what measurements, if you're trying to make exact things, what measurements they are. These are your basic shapes to begin with. There is a scrub tool where you can draw and you can draw a shape and you can erase parts of it and it shows you what the 3d view is here and then we could just hit done and then you actually have your shape just showing you that real quick you have your text you know you can put you just put your text right in here most of your stuff's right here well and then we could change the text we can make the height say Se oh segments so we can bevel it so you got all these basic shapes and then you have other shapes you have text and numbers you can work with you got 
character pieces you can work with and you guys can explore in here the biggest thing that I use I put it into favorites you got to go through this there's I have favorites here like if I want to make a curve tool I kept that in my favorites you got to go through the library I don't remember exactly where these are screw this is another really cool thing if you want to make screw stuff for your <laughs> that sounded bad if you want to make screws for your projects you can do this and it's really cool if you click on it you can put the diameter you can put the pitch you can put segments how many screws you want to put into it the height you know tail end you want to make it thicker you want to make it smaller thread scale we can make it the scale of the thread so if you want to make a project like that you can just to show you real quick you know, I put that in my favorites. I don't know where that one's actually located, but it's actually, it's in here somewhere. And I'll put it in the description down below so that way you guys know. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything again and delete it. And I know I'm going fast, guys. I'm just trying to make this tutorial more interesting and easy for you to understand. Let's go into how to actually work in this. If you're going to actually design something, how it works. So basically, you have objects that you put together. You use these to make something. And we're going to use the workspace tool. I want to put this roof right on the house there. Let's put it right there. Okay. The way 3D slicers work is they want this to be one object. And that's where this comes in handy. And we'll put this back on here. Is what we're going to do is we're going to select the roof. And we're going to select the bottom here. And we're going to click on this. And this is a group tool. Okay. So it grouped it together. And that looks like a little Monopoly house. And it grouped it together. And then if you want to ungroup, you click this. And it'll ungroup it. So we'll, we'll group it back together. And when you group it together, now when you bring it into your slicer, this will actually be able to slice instead of it trying to slice with that segment in the middle. So that's the biggest thing that I want to emphasize is that anything that you bring out as an STL file, you want it to be one solid piece because not unless you're making multiple pieces but you want it and I'll show you that as well but you want it to be one solid piece so that way the slicer is only looking at the geometry as one piece and it makes it a heck of a lot easier for the slicer otherwise it's gonna show problems if you if you exported it out like this it's gonna show problems it's gonna be like oh there's a segment here there's two there's two pieces intercepting here that and it ain't gonna calculate it right it may print it but it's not gonna calculate it right so that's what you want to try and do you want to try and combine them together now, if you wanted to add other stuff to this, this is where this program gets really interesting. And this is what you can take a regular cylinder or you can take the whole cylinder. We're just going to take the whole cylinder. And like, let's say I want to make, I don't know, a hole, a hole here for some reason. So we're going to go at 90 degrees there. And you could just type in 90 here too. We'll just do 90 so that way it's even, not odd. And we go right into this. So now we're intercepting and we'll put it on flat view so that way we can actually see the front of it. And this is where flat view gets really good because this is 3D view. View, this is flat view and this is what I was talking about earlier so if you're trying to line up stuff correctly you want the flat view so we have the flat view here and we're gonna go in just a little bit and we're gonna make it go into the bottom there so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab all this we're gonna go back to 3d view so we could actually see it and we're gonna we're gonna group it again and now it's sliced a hole right in there so that kind of gives you an idea of how this software is going to work. And it doesn't only slice a hole so if I ungroup this it'll slice a hole on even too so if I grab this and go off to the side like this and then group it boom cuts a slice right into it there that's how you're going to build your objects all right so now we're going to build a box so we're going to click and we're going to drag this box in here i'm going to leave it 20 by 20 i want to leave the height alone too we're going to keep that all the same we're going to take this box we're going to duplicate it okay and we're going to take the box and we're going to make it 18 by 18. i want to take this arrow right up here and we're going to drag it up two millimeters Okay, and we're going to turn this box into a hole. And then we're going to click this, click both of them. Right now they're not aligned. And we're going to click on the align tool. And we're going to align there and align there. So that way it's directly in the middle. And if we put this in top view and we put it in flat view, you can see that it's perfectly aligned. We're going to select all that and we're going to go ahead and group it. So now we'll take it out of flat view and put it in 3d view now you can see there is a hole in the box now let's make a lid for this box we we'll bring another box in there and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this one 22 because we want it to fit over it by 22 okay we're gonna make this box we'll go ahead and make it six high Boom. Again, grab one of these boxes if we wanted to and drag it over there, which I'll show you that real quick. We'll just do that. And we'll make this one 20.5 by 20.5 millimeters. There we go. And we're going to align this. We'll use the align tool. Boom. 
Boom. Okay, now we got an edge going around there. That looks good. I'm going to take this box. We don't want it to go through because if we do a hole right now, I'll show you what I'm talking about. We do a hole right now. Oh my God, there's no lid. So we're going to ungroup that. And we're going to grab this box and we're going to go up two millimeters. Boom. Two millimeters. Select it. Group it. Boom. Now we got a top. So just to make sure that this top will fit, we're going to click on this, we're going to copy it, and we're going to get this workspace panel, and we're going to put it right on the top there, and we're going to paste it right on top. Click on the align tool. Let's align this bad boy. We want to align it there and align it there. And then what we're going to do is click off to the side, click on it again, and we're going to rotate this 180. All right, we'll put the workspace back to where it was. Let's click on this and go to transparency, which is technically whole, and we can see how it's gonna line up. So let's bring this down a little bit, and it looks like it may be a tight fit. And this is where, if you're gonna make tight fits, you may have to print it more than once to see how well something will work. We'll print this out and see how well this works. It looks like I have enough gap. It might be too much of a gap. It might be too little of a gap. So you'd have to play with it and figure out. And there is settings that you can adjust in Cura so you don't get the elephant foot effect. I've never really played with that. I've always just adjusted it right in my design and I design it basically for Cura. That looks like that's gonna fit fine. I'm gonna click on that, I'm gonna delete that, I'm gonna take these, and I'm gonna use the align tool just to align them together, like that, and I'm gonna select them again, and I'm gonna bring them over to the center, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna export these. So we'll go to export, and it you, you want only the two selected thing or everything in the design, we just want the two selected things, so we could leave that there, and we'll just click on SDL. Then it'll export, and if you look over in your downloads, and there it is, I called it box two because I already exported it out once. So now if we scroll over to Cura, and we open up Cura, and we open up that file, and we open it up, boom, there's your box. And mine's blue because that's the tech bear. Well, we do our settings, we do uh, 0.2, and we do 20 millimeters, you could add supports, adhesion, we don't need any of that stuff, and we just slice it, and we go to preview, you can see that it's gonna work perfect. It's gonna be exactly what we want, how we want it. It's gonna draw it really well. And we're gonna send this off to print. So that's basically the app, guys. I hope that helped you. It's all the basics that you need to get started making your own stuff. I am self-taught. I found this trying to Google, you know, how to make your own 3D prints, and this is what I found. It really has a good tutorial in the beginning. It's just very time-consuming, but it really does have a really good tutorial that it walks you through step-by-step step of what to do, but at least this gives you the basics so that way you guys understand, because there was a lot of stuff that wasn't explained in their tutorials, but it was really good and a lot of fun to learn how to use it step by step and I've made quite a few things it's been extremely useful you can import some models and it has a lot of capability it's very basic but it does the job and you guys all know if you watch my channel I'm all about do what works and this works for me. So I hope that helps. Anything you guys make, please leave comments down below. I'd love to see them. I'd love to hear what you made. Comment what you made below if you did this and my tutorial helped you. I'd just like to know. And if this really is helping you, let me know and I'll make more of these videos and show you, you know, if there's something you're having trouble trying to make and you don't know how to make it and you want me to try and show it to you, leave me a message. Let me see if I can tackle it. That's it for me, guys. Make sure you like, subscribe if this helped you in any way. And remember to ring that bell if you want to see more of my craziness and remember you could do anything if you put your mind to it later guys 126.6 i know what you're thinking crazy wills tech shows over what do i do now real simple guys you hit that like button and you hit that subscribe button and then you check out my other videos it's not over i made a lot it's been a good year